Listening A. Listening 1, page 12. You will hear part of an interview with Kathy, a British woman who lives in Greece and is married to a Greek man. She is talking about the differences between family life in Britain and Greece. Kathy, what do you think are the main differences between family life in Greece and Britain? Well, I don't really like to generalise, especially as life is changing fast in both countries. In Britain, the divorce rate is very high and there are a lot of single-parent families. So not many kids nowadays grow up in the standard mum, dad and two kids family that I had. And in Greece there's been a pattern for a long time now of people moving to the large towns for work, so the old extended family system is breaking down. But I think it would be fair to say that family links in Greece are still more important than they are in Britain, and that family members feel more connected here. Hmm. Can you give me some examples from your own experience? Well, certainly. As I said, I grew up in a classic British nuclear family. My brother is five years older than me, and he left home at 17. So for my teenage years, it was more like being an only child. I have three cousins on my father's side, but they lived a long way away from us, so I rarely saw them. Every so often, we'd get together at Christmas with their family and our grandparents, and that was a real novelty for me, being in such a big, lively group, all relatives. Then, when Dimitris and I got married and moved here five years ago, suddenly I was plunged into a completely different world. We lived in the small flat upstairs, and my parents-in-law were in this one. We swapped last year after our son was born to give us more space. Dimitri's brother, his wife, their two children, and his mother-in-law live in the large flat opposite, across the hall. So that's ten family members, all within thirty seconds of each other's front door. Now listen again, and check, complete, or amend your answers. Listening to, page 13. The interview with Cathy you heard in Listening 1 continues. So, Cathy, which system do you think is better? Oh, I couldn't say one was better than the other. They both had their pros and cons. For me, coming from my background, the main drawback here is the lack of privacy. Not just in the physical sense of people popping in and out all day. That's nice sometimes, because you never feel lonely. But it can be annoying when you're trying to get on with something and you keep being interrupted. For me, what's far worse is the lack of mental and emotional privacy. Everyone in the family knows all your problems and difficulties. And, of course, everyone has his or her opinion about what you should do. Mm. I've been used to making my own decisions since I left home and started my first job at 18... And I resent other people getting involved in my business, unless I specifically ask for help and advice. But the other side of the coin is that if you need practical help, it's always available. Such as? Well, I work part-time as a hotel receptionist, and my schedule changes every week, which would make finding a childminder virtually impossible if I lived in Britain. But here, if Demetrius is at work too... I just take our son upstairs to his grandmother or across the hall to his aunt, and they're happy to babysit until one of us gets home. I really appreciate that. I think the system works well for old people, too. Dimitri's brother's mother-in-law moved in with them several years ago when her husband died. She's quite old, well over 80, and she suffers a lot of pain from arthritis. But she still cooks lunch for them all every day. <laughs> I was a bit shocked at that when I first came here. I thought, you know, that they were exploiting her. But now I think that's actually what keeps her going. She feels she's doing something useful for the family, that she's really needed, and that gives her the will to live. Sometimes I think about my own grandmother, who spent the last five years of her life in a nursing home. All she ever wanted to do was go back home again. But that wasn't possible, as she was too ill to cope alone. Mum and Dad were at work all day and I was at school, so we couldn't have her at our house. 
At the time, I thought the situation was perfectly normal, but now, when I see the way things are here, I feel really sad to remember that. Now listen again and check, complete or amend your answers. Listening 3, page 13. You will hear a radio program in which a couple discuss their unusual relationship. And now for our weekly spot on relationships. In the studio today we have Alec and Penny Stewart. Penny is a marketing manager with a computer company and Alec, a former bank clerk, is what we might call a house husband. I'll be asking them about their relationship, then, as usual, there'll be time for you to phone in with your questions for the couple at the end of the program. Let's start with you, Alec. I hope you didn't mind me referring to you as a house husband. Not at all. It's the best word I know to describe my role in our family. I cook, I clean, I do the shopping, collect our daughter from nursery school, and so on. All the things a traditional housewife does, so why not call me a house husband? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. So, how did it come about that Penny became the breadwinner and you took on the household duties? Well, it's not something that we planned, you know. Uh, we didn't sit down one day and say, let's try a spot of role reversal. <laughs> <laughs> now, right from the start of our marriage eight years ago, it was clear that Penny was the ambitious one. She was the one who did overtime if there was work still to be done, while I was strictly a nine-to-five guy. And she took special marketing classes and exams in her spare time in order to work her way up the company ladder, while I wanted to keep my spare time for my friends and our daughter once she was born. Then I was made redundant three years ago. I spent six months slogging around looking for a new job and getting more and more depressed until one day Penny pointed out that we didn't actually need two salaries, so why didn't I take over running the home? The very next day we paid off the cleaning lady and gave notice to the childminder, and I've never looked back since. So, you enjoy what you're doing? Enormously, yes. OK, uh, vacuum cleaning's not a lot of fun, but uh, I get great pleasure out of planning and cooking our meals. I've always been a bit of an amateur chef, and going shopping in a leisurely fashion instead of racing round a supermarket in the after-work rush. But the best thing is the chance to spend more time with my daughter. She's just turned four, and she's very good company, so we have lots of fun together. Penny, how about you? How has having Alec at home affected your life? Very positively. As Alec said, we used to pay for a cleaning lady and a childminder, and they did their jobs well enough, but it wasn't the same. Nowadays, if I have to stay late at work or go away on a business trip, I do so in the complete confidence that our daughter and our house are in safe hands. What about the thorny issue of money? Does that present any problems? Well, I, I pay the mortgage and the bills, like the phone and electricity. Then I leave a float of cash for Alec for the shopping petrol and so on. I make sure he's always got plenty to hand so he doesn't have to come and ask me, which might be embarrassing for him. Mm. And you, Alec, did you find it difficult to get used to the idea of Penny as the breadwinner? Mm, not really. You see, she's always earned more than me, so I got over any male pride about money and earning power a long time ago. But... It does rile me a bit when friends make jokes about me being a kept man. After all, it's not as if I sat around doing nothing all day or... Um... Or painting his toenails and waiting for me to come home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true that other men seem to feel threatened by how we live, while most women think it's great. In fact, my female colleagues are jealous of me. They're run off their feet trying to manage a career, a home and a family. Hmm. One more question from me, then we're going to open up the phone lines. Penny, what do you think you'll do, for example, if you have more children? Now listen.